Good evening, everybody. I didn't know that, but anyway. Hello, Bill. Hello, uh, Dwayne. Hello, Doug, and whoever else may be in there. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, I'll work here today. Here, I am. I'm working on it. I still got just a little bit of painting to do, and then I'll be okay. Yeah, and then it's off to the next uh, house of terror. You got the weekend up. So what, what I want to say that so live from the studios of KB2 UKA, Doug in Long Island, New York. This is Victor Alpha Three Kilo Bravo Charlie and the rest of the game. Uh, ESSB Rumble in the Jungle. Live on Friday night. It's the ESSB crew, starring Victor Alpha 3, Kilo Bravo Charlie, uh, K1WIL. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> I, hold on. I, I don't have the other two <laughs> memorized. Um, uh, well, if Dominic's still in there, Whiskey 4, Delta Oscar Mike, and, um, oh, my God, Dwayne and jo oh, KB3, WBX. And Dwayne, I don't see any messages from you in Signal recently, so I gotta leave yours out. And your producer's supposed to have that all ready for you. You're right. You're right. Um, Andy Crowley's in the live chat. I'll just blame it on him. He's the producer, and he didn't get me the call sign. Uh, KG2MM, what's up, Mike? So um, I I have to go back and watch uh, K1GMM Steve's uh, Thetis setup video. He had I I think you guys I was running um, his magic numbers for uh, uh, NR. Um, Dwayne, can you pull up your DSP and then the NR tab? Uh yeah, hold on. I'm assuming you're running the same numbers I was running. Let's see what you got in there. Okay, I'm in a DSP, and you want me in the NR uh, AMF tab? Correct, correct. Okay, I'm in there. Okay. Um, t left, left, top left, it says NR. It says taps, delay, gain, and leak. What do you have for those four? All right, I have uh, 64, 16, 100, and 100. Okay, those are the default. That's what I have. Um, Art has the updated settings. I gave them to him, so I'll have to ask. It makes it sound better. Okay, so that would be the settings that we're going to change? Well, if you give me the correct numbers. Yeah, I don't have them. They're, they're on a YouTube video. Um, that Steve K1GMM experimented and he ended up liking them and then we all liked them. Um, uh, bu bu DJ, what do yours say? Okay, yeah, I got confused. I was listening to the stream. <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, <laughs> settings on what? Uh, the, okay, settings on what? So if you go to setup and then DSP, and then click the tab below that says NR slash ANF. Let me know when you're there. Okay. And then on, on the first box, it says NR, and then it's got four numbers. Tap, delay, gain, and leak. What are your numbers? Okay, taps is 64, delay is 16, gain and leak are both 100. Yep, those. that's what I have. Those are the default. All right, so hold on. If you guys, guys give me like five minutes. I'm going to get the different numbers. Hold on one second. All right, get those numbers and we'll be glad to apply them. Well, Jeff, what do you think about the X era? I know it's needs some tweaking, but I got a good running start.
Okay, I really appreciate that. Dude. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> he, he's on his way down. All right. Oh. <laughs> that as your desired bandwidth. If you are running a virtual, I'm just getting you going. Remember, you can play with it later. I believe what okay, you're noise uh, reduction. Here uh, we go. So your numbers may look different. Don't know. So let me get uh, noise reduction and auto notch filter. Get this up on my screen. Oh yeah. Hold oh on yeah. Guys. I don't know. Lots of adjustments to make here. So yep. the noise reduction, the taps will basically these functions right here determine how strong the noise reduction system will be. So what I do here to make NR2 and NR2 right here, this will be your bread and butter between the NR2 and the AGC gain. It is phenomenal. You can hear a freaking pin drop in between overs and it doesn't matter if the signal's weak or not. Makes no difference. It just wipes out the noise. If you've got like a 40 over copy, you can shut it right off and just run the AGC expander here. The automatic notch filter in the quiet area is a little bit of a warbling effect, but I'll show you how to mitigate that. So you want to set this to five. You want to set this to three. And again, play with this. So I set this to 20. And this to 20. Okay. Uh, the A and F I have not touched because it seems to work okay. So I'm from the automatic notch filter. Um, NR2, if you run the second receiver, uh, go ahead and make your changes to that. Three. Twenty. And twenty. Everything else is the same. So I have pre-AGC, pre-AGC, uh, gamma. Uh, let's say gamma. Yep. A filter. That's done. Thanks, K1GMM, for those wonderful settings. Oh, yeah, it sounds better. Yeah, it, it sounds like your other one. I, I couldn't really there. tell it apart, to be honest with you. All right, guys, wait till you do this. What's up? Go ahead and calm me down. Oh, okay. I think I heard Doug come back. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> um, are you guys ready? Wait till I've already hear the change after making the changes. You're all louder, much louder, and it's much quieter noise. So um, if you're in the DSP uh, tab and then the NR ANF tab, um, <clears throat> here's the numbers. Taps set to five, delay set to three, Gain set to 20, leak set to 20, and then do the same thing for NRRX2, same numbers, and then the ANF don't touch, it's just the NR numbers. Click apply and listen to that. I'm back, W4, zero. All right, you're coming up on me now, Dom. Yeah, my buddy's uh, got, got up too far today. Well, I know Flex has an NR, but does it have those tap, delay, gain, and leak? It does. Uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's a little bit different terminology, but it's uh, on that order. It does. I can adjust everything, on, you know, on the noise levels and stuff. Yeah. It's from the NR. Um, <clears throat> what I will say, Bill, is while the NR2 is superior on the Anon, I think your AGCT is better on the Flex. And then you have the ICOM 7300, which is like great on all of it. What's up, K6? Uh, it makes a real good door stop. 
Well, you guys all sound marvelous. Uh, Jeff and Dwayne, did you enter those? And DJ, did you enter those numbers? Um, DJ, you go first. Oh, I did it as he was doing it. I was watching uh, your YouTube there. Do you hear the difference? Was the NR2 off? Yes. No, I'm saying the difference in the numbers from the from the default numbers. Yeah, well, uh, I always run NR2, so when I took it off, it was quieter than, than I had before. Oh, when you put it back on, yeah. But I always run NR2 anyhow. Yeah, so do I, so do I. Jeff, did you, uh, did you update it? No, I was watching your YouTube and I was not paying attention. Can we go over it again? Yes, uh, you have your NR2 on, correct? Only one time, only just one yes, it is on, Doug. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, DSP, go to setup, go to DSP, then go to NR slash ANF, and then under the NR bo boxes, there's four boxes, tap, delay, gain, and leak. Make your tap five, make your delay three, Make your gain 20 and make, um, <clears throat> and make, uh, b -b 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 make your leak 20. I'm going to tell all you to mess around with Buzz again. With what? I'm going to tell all and Jeff that he's playing around with the buttons again on his radio. <laughs> uh, but the, no, Art has these settings. This is what Art has. Well, I gave them to him, and I got them from Steve. Um, and then just click apply, uh, Jeff, and it should sound even. NR two should sound even better to you. It does. It does sound a lot better than what it did. And I concur. Yeah, now we all sound nice and smooth. I, Doug, I've had guys. When I was live streaming and they were watching, they would say, it sounds like FM, like there's no, it, it's just dead quiet. And I said, because I'm running NR2. So I said, that's what the, the advantage here with the Acetus and the Anon. And because uh, everybody's, you know, saying how noisy it is. But with mine, it was just dead quiet. Yeah, well, I have, <clears throat> I had, I put my AGC down a little bit, so that made it quieter. Um, but I have a lot of noise on uh, 80 tonight. I don't, not, not too bad, but it, it's uh, like frying eggs tonight. I leave my, I hear you my AGC to automatic. What'd you say? I heard you, DJ. What'd you say, Don? No, no, no I'm fooling with Jeff. He said, uh, he, uh, he said he wonders why they can't hear enough. And I said, listen. I said, I heard you. And he kind of started laughing. Did you look at my little video I sent to you today? That was awful. That was just awful, Dawn. <laughs> Hello, it's me. I'm the asshole. Hey, uh, Dwayne, what did you think of that? You didn't tell me. Oh, yeah, I did, but you, I thought you was in there. I thought that was funny. That was pretty good, wasn't it? I was like, yeah, I need that right there. When I press the buttons, I need to just throw that recording in there, too. Get that button on the preacher standard. Hey, uh, Doug. Yeah, Dwayne. Yeah, I'm running uh, the X Air, and I got a question on one of these plugins that it's uh, in here and it's supposed to be working. It's the dual uh, culminator. I'm not sure what that is. I didn't look it up yet. Do uh, you have any insight on that? Yes. I have a profiles. I'm not using the XR right now. I'm on my Apollo because I just didn't want to have any issues. I never set, I, I like started setting up the XR and then I had the issue with the radio. Um, so you have four FX boxes. Um, the, so the first three boxes 
you're not going, whatever you're running, and you can tell me what you're running in a second, but the first three boxes where you select underneath it, what ch the, there's the FX button, and then there is, you could select what channel to apply it to. You're not going to hit the FX button on those first three, so they're going to stay grayed out. And you're not going to apply it to any channel. All you're going to do is go into the Sends tab and increase the gain of those three FX, one, two, and three, up to zero dB. Okay. Then the fourth plugin, you want to make the dual combinator. You want to insert the dual combinator on the, so you're going to click the insert button and then you're going to make channel, the first drop down box, you're going to make that main left, right. You're inserting the effect on the main output. And what the dual combinator is, um, it's a wonderful multi-band compressor the loads of control i can't explain it to you right now it would take too long i suggest um youtubing dual combinator and watching a bunch of videos on how to use it um you get met you get like a master compression control then you can control the compression on individual bands and raise the gain or lower the gain on those bands um, it's better than the 2496. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, it's actually up and running and working, and now I understand what that is. Uh, so that gave me a, a good head start on it. Uh, okay, very good. I, I know exactly what it does, and then that's what I needed to know. Now, I don't know Bob better than 2496. Well, it from, I think it's got more control. There's more control. It's more compression. So maybe not better, but different. Yeah, but it's not doing what that 2496 is with the shelving, uh, all the, uh, the uh, octaves and all that stuff. No way. No, no, no. It's not doing that. Um, but it is allowing... So it's truly... There's more... The 2496 is more than a multiband compressor. Um, it's actually not really a multiband compressor. We call it that. It's a dynamic EQ, um, which gives the effect of compression on e e those bands. Um, but the other thing that I like about the XAIR, so the way I would set that up, Dwayne, is you know I would shut off your CFC audio tools, not now, and because it sounds really, really good right now. Um, but I would I would try to get it to sound as good as it can without the CFC first. Then the, another trick with that thing is to click the LR channel. That's the main output. You click it and you highlight it. And then you go to the EQ for that channel. And you can adjust the EQ of the main, of the main output. So now that allows you to EQ your mic channel like you did, apply effects to your mic channel, apply effects to the main with the dual combinator, and then do slight touch-up EQ on the main output. Like, let's say you just want to give a little bit more air to the high end. You come in with a very tight Q and um, do it like, I don't know, a 2 dB boost, and you'll hear it in the recording. Then when you're all done, then you go in and apply a little bit of CFC. All right, uh, give me something to play around with. I appreciate that insight. It sounds really good, though. Um, are you using somebody's profile, or did you build that? Uh, I used it. I think it was uh, Dawn's, and I accidentally did something, so I had to kind of rebuild it a little bit. So it's been tweaked, and then I renamed it with my call sign. But it has that uh, dual culminator in there uh, is the lead, and then the other three is the dual exciter, uh, the rich plate reverb, and a sound mixer. That's the that is my four. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds sweet. Jeff, are you on the XAIR cell? Oh, he might have stepped away. Uh, almost ten after KB two UKA. 
W4DOF. VA3 KBC. No, Doug, I think that's that is, uh, uh, just uh, what the wind does. Yep, W3DP it is. Wait, I'm, Bill, you were light on me. What do you say, Dwayne? Uh, I'm running. I got that off of Jeff. Uh, I own it now, and he couldn't run it because he had that noise in there, but uh, it works fine for me. Okay, got it, got it. So, do you guys want to hear my big secret? Wait, there was somebody else in there. Who was that, that double with Doug? No, I said uh, the man's going away. I said I didn't even hear Doug. Oh, uh, Bill said he lost it. Doug, it may come back uh, uh, before he, uh, here in a little bit. Uh, where are we at? Um, so. Um, I still hear you, Bill. So uh, what I was saying, Dominic and and company, do you guys want to hear my big secret? Yeah, we sure do. I ordered a Flex 6600. Uh -huh. <laughs> going crazy. Um, <clears throat> I was speaking to my buddy in Greece who uh, helped me set up the Apollo. And um, it, it sound I, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of videos on the software. I'm going to run it on my iMac. And uh, I'm going to use the Apollo with it. And it's got this full duplex feature <clears throat> where you can you transmit on, an, on um, antenna one and you receive on the transverter output. And it, la it allows you perfectly to hear your over-the-air audio. Nice. About some about time somebody comes to their senses. Wait, uh, what'd you say? <laughs> I can't hear him. He's not he hearing you good time, uh, we come to our senses. Oh, uh, so what, with getting a flex? <laughs> yeah. When I had my 6400, I ran that inverter all the time to adjust my audio. Oh, so you would listen back, right? And it did you have a, did you have the inverter, the transverter going to a dummy load? I heard you don't even have to. I know you don't have to. Uh, they'll never hear you. It's uh, just uh, thousands of a milliwatt. Uh, you can hear your audio, what you're truly transmitting. Uh, and I didn't know about it until I was communicating with the flex guy, and he told me about that, and then that's when I start using it. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty nice feature to have. I know we knock them, but it's pretty, especially on the Mac software, it's pretty cool that um, everything is integrated. The logbook, FT8, FT4, everything is integrated. And you really like the fact that you can use your Mac. Yeah. Um, it's what kept me from getting an Anon for the longest time. Um, when you're running virtual audio... It, it's just better on the Mac. It's more flawless. The uh, the Wayne ask him if there's a way to carry it on him. I, I can hear bits and pieces of what he's saying. Bill wants to know: Is there a waiting period on that radio? So they've been not producing radios, I think, all year. Um, so people have ordered them since January, and they have not gotten the radio. They right now. The day I ordered it, it's a six to eight week lead time. The first week of April, they're going to be shipping all the back orders from people that ordered in January, February. And then I should, I'm hoping to get mine around the third to fourth week of April. You copy that, Bill? I heard April. Do not say April? Yep. Yeah. Third or, four, third or fourth week of April. And the 6600 has a balanced input. That's the other reason I got that one. Yeah, right now I'm using uh, XLRN in the air, and I'm coming out right now, quarter and six. I'm using auxiliary one. 
My new cable just came in today where I can use uh, the XLR out to the RCA jack in the back of the radio. And you'll be able to remote with the two duck. Yeah, I, I, that'll be that'll I'll do that second, but I know you you will be able to. Um, you just said something very interesting, Dwayne. Uh, you're coming out of aux auxiliary one of the X Air, and that's what you're feeding into the Anon. That is correct. Okay, so um, if go to your FX tab and tell me what it says underneath the dual combinator. Are the are the two buttons pink? And what is the the two FX buttons? Are they like purplish pink? And what does it say? underneath those buttons or to the side of those buttons uh right now they are pink and both of them say main uh left and right and when i speak into it uh both of the green tabs on both sides are going up equally and they're just uh, uh bumping uh, probably not quite to the 20 shy of that 20. so do you want the good news or the bad news uh, the good news, it sounds probably decent. The bad news, I'm probably feeding too much in. Nope. The good news is your dual combinator is working. The bad news is we are not hearing it. Because you're coming out of the auxiliary channel, you have to come out of main L or main R because that's where the dual combinator is assigned to. So we're, you sound great right now, and we're not even hearing the multiband. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that, but yeah, my new cables came in today, so I can use the XLR plug. I just haven't installed it yet. So you're coming out of an auxiliary uh, inch and a quarter? Yep, uh, auxiliary one quarter inch jack to RCA. I already had that cable, and that allowed me to put it on the air. Yep, so plug um, uh, plug that other, the XLR into the main right or left. You only need one of them. And then go into your radio from there, and we're going to hear a big difference. All right, and just in a couple minutes, that's what I will do. As soon as I get this cat off my lap, you got a lap dancing cat? Oh, she likes to have attention. She just jumped up here and wants some attention. I used to have a cat that would get on my hand and wouldn't allow me to use the mouse. Well, I'm fortunate. Uh, I'm not keen with a mouse. I'm keen with a foot pedal. No, but when I was surfing. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad you told me about that, Doug. I didn't know that it was set up like that. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's, that's why you can... Now, you could set it up to have everything spit out of the aux channel. Um, you can do that, but then that's just acting as a main. The whole purpose of the aux is, so think of this, channel one is your mic. This is where it gets real crazy, and this is why the X air is very cool. Channel one is your mic. You apply your effects, those first three, or maybe you only want to apply one, right? Like, um, yeah. So you you can, a cool thing to do is, Make effect one. I forgot what it's called in the X Air, but it's the Pultec EQ one. Um, it's an emulation of the Pultec EQ, which does a lot of beautiful things to the low end and to the high end, but really to the low end. Then you send chan your mic channel to auxiliary one, okay? And you come out of auxiliary one and you go into maybe an Aphex two hundred four, the actual analog piece. And then you come out of the Aphex 204, and now you go back into channel 2 of the X-Air. And now you only send channel 2 to the main. Um, and then you go and process the main how you want, and then you, send, then you come out of the main and you go to the radio. So you can integrate the X-Air, because at the end of the day, it's a mixer. So you can integrate it with rack gear. And then it becomes very powerful. VA3 KVC, in just in case I missed the uh, identifying. W3 DEP, and I'll be right back. I'm going to connect that cable. I'm curious. W4 DEP. WBX with a mouthful of fish.
KB2 UKA. Hey there, uh, what's going on, uh, Nate? Good evening, y'all. Ah, uh, what's up, Nate? Uh, I got you like five seven ish up here in New York. Thank you, thank you. You as well. Thank you. So, Dominic, um, my buddy uh, Greg in California was telling me the only way to get on to, and I think you're going to tell me he's wrong because I think you've done it already, but he told me the only way to get on to DMR and to crosstalk between D-Star and DMR is to use an open spot. He said it won't work with the Pi Star. Yeah, it'll work. Uh, there's a reflector that you can go to and connect to that reflector, and you can crosstalk with the uh, with the uh, with the other services, D Star, and I think also Fusion. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I know you spoke to Mike once. I think what he meant was with the open star, you could go anywhere. Oh, the open spot, you can go anywhere. Yeah, I don't know what he means. Because I know with the um, Pi Star, uh, you could do D Star. You can't do them together, but you could do D Star, Fusion, um, um, the DMR, Fusion, D Star. And there's like two other uh, protocols. It's just a matter of turning them on. Now, on this unit here, I got uh, DMR turned on and uh, D-Star turned on. Because when Mike comes around, he does the uh, the DMR. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll try that reflector that cross talks. That's very, so. When you're listening to that reflector, you could be hearing D-Star or DMR. Right, right. When you go to that reflector, uh, Mike. When Mike gets on, he knows. He told me the reflector. I forgot which one it was. I think I have it in memory. I just don't remember which one it was. So when he gets on, I'll find out what it is. And then you can go on there and you would be able to talk to Mike while he's on DMR. All right. He was in my live chat. I'm asking him if he's still there. Mike, what reflector cross talks between DMR and D-Star? All right. Let's see if he's still there. All right. I got that cable hooked up. And everything's looking good. Uh, no lines, so I don't know if it changed my effects or anything, but there it is. Okay, so yes. So now you sound much different. It needs to be tweaked. It does not sound bad, but it's hot. It's hot on the high end, um, but and it's very sharp. Um, so you'll either tweak the EQ or you'll tweak the dual combinator because the dual combinator acts as kind of a parametric EQ also. Um, like you might want to raise the gain on the low end in the dual combinator and things like that. But now you are getting everything out of the XAR. All right, I adjusted, uh, I adjusted the EQ right now. I brought the highs down a little bit. I was trying to almost uh, emulate the look on the DEQ uh, I was trying to make the waveform look identical, but I lowered some of the highs. I don't know if that changed it or not. It got it got it closer. Hold on one second. I'm zooming out here for a second. Uh, give me a little bit more audio. All right, uh, there it is. There, I made a small adjustment. I can do more if I get too if the highs are too high, but uh, there it is, right there. W three D. I feel like you need a cut between like um uh between like 600 and like 1000. What does your EQ look like there? Uh I got it on the 2K. Uh the mid high on the 2K. I'd have to slide it over to the 1K, but let me lower this down a little bit more. Low, yeah, maybe lower that, maybe lower the high end a little bit more. All right, I tweaked it just a little bit more. Oh, it's getting close. It's getting close. Um, 
it sounds very pleasant right now. I wouldn't, I would save it right now. And then tonight I would watch, because so, it's hard to do over the air. Um, and it's going to be a lot of trial and error. But I would watch videos on how to adjust uh, the dual combinator. And um, like, for instance, instead of cutting your high end any more than you already did, um, you would go into the dual combinator and you might want to increase the compression at like 2500 to 4K and then that'll smooth it out a little bit. Um, but it'll keep that nice brightness, but it, it, it'll uh, muffle it down. Okay, that's something I can play with then. Uh, but yeah, I'm, as long as it's okay now, it's comfortable to listen to. Right? As long as it's not too harsh. No, it sounds good. What do you guys think? I'm okay to you, Bill. Did I chase them all off? Uh, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. What's up? Uh, we made a small adjustment on my audio. Am I okay? No, you, you sound fine. It's uh, not like I've uh, uh, talked a little bit. Yeah, I know it's probably got a little tweaking to do, but uh, uh, being that I switched cable, that changed everything, so uh, I'm going to have to tweak it a little bit more. Yeah, you lost your fullness, uh, your, your, your presence. Other than that, uh, it's not fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, that, so you, you could either, you could do two things, Dwayne. You could plug it back in the way you had it for now, because that did sound better. Um... But you're going to want to tweak it from where you are now because you you ha the dual combinator works best when it goes to the main. All right, I uh, I lifted the highs up a little bit more where I had them, but yeah, I'll, I'll play around with it. I'll put the earphones on and play around with it. I'm back, Kilo Bravo Three Whiskey Bravo X-Ray. Oh wow, you're. 20 over now. Oh man, I mean, I'm I'm finally getting out a little bit. Uh, how? What signal strength am I to you? Uh, I got you about 25 over right there. And sounding good down here. Yeah, you as well. And you just hit. Uh, hold on, 20 over. What adjustments do I have here? Volts, amps, all. Oh, very cool. Okay. Um, just the, did you guys install the new Thetis yet? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I, uh, I'm not scared. Mine works good, and I'll just wait until they get all the bugs worked out, and then, then I'll, uh, then I'll load mine up. So there you go. That's the way I want to do mine. Yeah, it's working all right. It's working fine. These meters are pretty cool. I, I didn't even scratch the surface with them. I've got a uh, signal average, mic gain, CFC comp, EQ, SWR. Then I've got the time. Um, I've got my VFO, and then I've got one of these uh, multimeters here, giving me uh, SWR, uh, ALC, power output, all that fun stuff. What's up, Randy? Hope you're doing well, brother. Right, yeah. I think I'm going to do it too, but just not right now. I'm going to give it a day or two. What about you, DJ? Where'd you go, DJ? Where'd you go, Dawn? I'm here. Are you hearing the guys? Yeah, I, I, I can hear them, but I mean, you know, the Pennsylvania guys, not a little tough on me. I, I could never hear them too good on Asian media for some reason. Oh, I got you. Yeah, Dwayne was hollering at, hollering at you a little while ago. Oh, I took a little CS to there. I'm falling asleep. I didn't fall asleep, but <laughs> I was away from the radio. Yeah, I hooked up that other cable and it changed a couple of things, so I got to tweak it back when he's saying. Mm 
the sound like he took a little bit, uh, took a little bit of a five back to the music or something. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're out of there for now. Is it good or bad? Well, on me, it's good because, uh, like, uh, you're on this side. <laughs> so, it's pretty loud. Not bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. I'm Oh, I, I totally understand. It's going to take a little bit of uh, tweaking to get this thing where I want it to be, so I totally understand. I really, truly believe it's workable. Oh, yeah. I do. Uh, where the heck did my audio go? I don't say anything. No spurs at all coming up. It's uh, perfectly laid uh, flat. Nothing there. And then when I speak, of course, it jumps up. Yeah. Uh, when I hope you're on up, I hope I have as much luck with that uh, as you did right there. Yeah, sounds good. Seems to me like you just need to add back some of your bass and, uh, and a little bit of highs, and, and you'll have it. It's close. Yeah, when I changed that cable, uh, as Doug uh, was explaining to me, I didn't know uh, that when you go onto the auxiliary like I was running it, the dual combinator did not is not in line with that. So now the dual combinator is in line, so that changed my settings. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know that much about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I'll have that there on there in 24 so, uh, I thought it was done well, but I never sound like that guy. <laughs> I'm just having the same equipment. Right? All right, I increased my highs just a pinch. I didn't go overboard, did I? See, you didn't, but if you increase the multi, the dual combinator in that two to like four to five K range, it'll put a nice little cherry on top. Uh, you said between the 4 and 5K range? Yeah, do you, do you know how to make the adjustments on it? Because it, it's relatively complicated. I do not. I'll have to watch the video on it. Yep, because uh, that's that's where um, all those multiband compressors sound. Like, um, even with the 2496, if you read, um, if you read John's in setup instructions, he's got huge boosts in the high end. And then he he brings the sizzle down off the S's by increasing the compression in the high end. So, and it's the same with the low end, right? Like you could pump your low end, but then you've got, you want it to be even with all the other frequencies. So you compress it down and uh, it, it's a really cool effect. Yeah, I'll watch a video on that and try to figure that out. Then I can tweak it. I just barely got it on. Um, I think you could put it up a l maybe a tiny, tiny bit more. And how about you, Jeff? You're really close. Can you hear my effects at all? I'll be honest with you. I can't hear them at all. I don't know if it's my hearing or what, but I can't hear them. I'll be right back, guys. i got to put something in the refrigerator. W-40. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Check, check, check a few times. Check, check, check. All right, I'm going to figure out how to do that. I think I just need to turn the gain up on that. Um, it depends. So, uh, what, what? FX slot do you have the reverb in? Uh, it's in FX2. Okay, so now if you go to Sends and you look at the FX2 bar, what? how high up is that slider? They're all set at zero. All the effects are set at zero. 
Okay, and when you talk, how um, what do you peek at on FX2? All right, as I'm talking, it's peaking like the other ones, right around minus, uh, I believe that's minus 30. Okay, um, and then, so, okay, that's interesting. Um, you could try it two ways. You could go past zero dB. You know what? Let's just go slide it all the way up to the top. Let's see if we hear it. Okay, I'm going to do it right now. All right, I slid it all the way to the top, and it didn't change anything. No, it did not. Hmm. All right, put it back to zero dB. Um... You know what? I don't think this will screw anything up. Let me open up the Xair edit because I have it here. Uh, no, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, search Xair edit. Okay. Um, all right, hold on one sec. Yeah, when I talk, I can see uh, the lights, uh, the LEDs moving like it's there, but you guys are not hearing it for some reason. So, when when you said the slider was at zero, you're talking about the slider under in the sense tab underneath the blue FX2, or are you talking about the slider on the main console board that says FX2? Uh, right where it says FX2, it's lit up blue, all the way down that slider right down below it, that is a slider that I was moving. Okay, and then above FX2, it says post fader, pre fader, post CQ with the circles? That is correct. Okay, so that is the right adjustment. What um, What's the name of the reverb you're using? Uh, let me go. Rich Plate Reverb. All right, let me pull it up. Okay. Um, and and um, underneath the word, first of all, the word insert is not clicked, correct? That is correct. I already played with that. If I click on insert, it takes an auto line. When it's grayed out, it's in line. It's in line to the channel, correct. When you click insert though you th that's turning on the insert and then you have to select where do you want to insert it and right now underneath insert it should say off that is correct it says off okay so um go into the actual effect and uh right in the middle where it says plate put that all the way up all right, plates all the way, how's it going? All right, something's weird. It's the effects aren't getting through. Put level all the way up. Levels all the way up. What's weird is when I'm on the auxiliary, I can hear it just fine. When I was in the quarter inch jack auxiliary. Going on there now. Yeah, I hear it now. Put um put size back to where it was and then bring the level down a little bit all right i moved it down uh, three quarters away well it's not three quarters of the way all right do, do me one more favor x out the effect click the x button so you close it out and then your microphone's on channel one i'm on channel three Okay, click three so that it's highlighted. Okay, it's highlighted. <laughs> oh, 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 well, no, I don't know what just happened, but you have a load of reverb. Um, did you click solo or did you click, did you click solo or just the three? I clicked channel three. I inserted on channel three. No, 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 no. Don't insert it. Click off. I want to, uh, we're, we're, we're done with the effect. I just want you to, so take it off. Take it off. 
and then click the number, th click the mic channel um, where it just says zero three. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's on, and it's up uh, um, almost halfway up. Okay. Um, but you you highlighted your mic channel the where it says zero three, and then it says solo. I don't want you to click solo. I just want you to click zero three so that channel gets selected. So you were talking down the below on the slider of where it says zero three. Yeah, I have it named my call sign W three D P. I did not hit the solo. Okay, so that all right, so that channel is selected then, correct? That is correct. Okay, now go up to the top where it says input, click input. Um, nope, not input, click channel. And then once you're in channel, all the right, way to the right, it says main out, LR. Is that LR button lit up? Uh, LR is lit up orange, yes. Okay, so that means that channel is being sent to the main, which is what you want it to do. And then under LR, it says panorama. Is that is that white line right in the mi middle at zero? Uh, no, it's highlighted to the left at minus 100 in that little box. Is that what you're meaning? Yep, put it at zero. Okay, it's right in the middle at zero. Okay, and then what main are you plugged into? Main R or main L? Uh, I'm plugged into the L. Okay, that's why it made no change. Okay, all right. So that's fine. I leave it at zero because if you set, if you leave it at zero, it doesn't matter which main you plug into. You just lucked out and plugged into main left. If you would have plugged into main right. Um, the way it was set, you would have had no audio. Um, I don't know why. Uh, you know, it might it might be the reverb you chose. Play play around with other reverbs. I feel like um, it sh we should hear it more, but not as much as we heard when you inserted it. Yeah, how about uh, an aux uh, at the auxiliary bus? Uh, they got the slide effects there. They're all set. Uh, uh, about minus two. What, the red aux channel? Yeah, where it says aux bus send. Uh, down below it says effect send. Hold on, aux bus send. Um, is this in the sends? Oh. Um. Wait, no, What what tab are you selected? Okay, I'm still in the channel, and the channel, and right there uh, in the channel, it says aux bus send, and I guess you, that's where you adjust for your auxiliaries, and down below it says effects send. Oh, that might be it. Um, so, do me a favor, slide the number two slider to the right. That's all the way to the right, and I'm going to slide it all the way back to the left. That's all the way back to the right. Okay, so that's it. All right. Um, you have to send the channel to the friggin' effect. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, R, so yes, I, put it up halfway. Okay, it's about halfway. Go three quarters. That's three quarters right where there's like a little white line. Yep, and then are one, three, and four, are they at zero? Are they all the way to the left? Uh, they're, no, they're all the way to that little line, that white line. Oh, and where was two? Was two all the way to that line too? Yep, they were all matching. Okay, well I hear... Put two all the way to the right again. All right, and it's all the way to the right. You guys hear the reverb now, right? Yes. 
All right, put it back to the line. Okay. All right, and give us some audio. And Jeff, let me know if you hear it. All right, check, check. One, two. Yes, it's there. Yeah, they hear it. Yeah, really not hear much. Of course, you don't want to hear much anyways, but yeah, it sounds like I'm high pitched also. Yes, you have to, you, you got, honestly, what I would do, Dwayne, I know this sucks, but now that you, now that you're coming out of the main, um, I would, I would start from scratch. I would, I would EQ the channel. I would add a little compression. Then I would go into the effects that you have. And then the last thing, get all that sounding good and then play with the dual combinator, get that sounding really good and then add, um, CFC. All right, that's what I'll do. I'll take some time and do that. I don't want to talk to Frank with that, but uh, appreciate you giving me the insight on that uh, dual culminator. At least I know what that's for, and uh, uh, multi-band compression is a good thing. I'm going to send you a video um, in two seconds. Yeah, I, I think I can hear just a touch in there, and that's what I want. I don't want to have an echo, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I mean, I can hear it. I, like I said, it's a work in progress. I got a lot, a lot of adjustments to do here. Stay it away. Yeah, Jeff? Just when you start out, I've been watching you on the spectrum. I come from a, a thousand to three thousand is is higher than the rest. So if you just take him down, I think it would sound great. Uh, we're at between a thousand and three thousand. You hump up in the middle instead of being straight or dipped down a little. You're actually from a thousand to three thousand as a curve up in the middle at two and back down to three. I was going to take a picture and send it to you, but I didn't. Okay, look at that right there, Jeff. What does that look like to you there? I made a small adjustment. That looked better. Yeah, come back again. All right, uh, right there. I made a small adjustment on that. I'd still say right around 2,500. You need to take it down some more. All right, I made another adjustment another way. Wow, wow, that's that's getting way better. And now we need some bass. Yeah, what what's your um what's your low cut right now on the transmit? Like uh on the bottom of Thetis. What what's the low number? Forty five. Okay, and wh where are you on the EQ at forty five? You know what, let me do this. Uh uh I have my transmit equalizer on. I probably don't need it on. Let me set it off. I don't know how bad that made it, but I uh, shut the transmit equalizer off on these. Well, yes, you absolutely need that off. That smoothed it up a little bit. But let's try this. This will be a fun experiment. Go into the XAir edit. Now, like before, when I had you select your mic channel, go all the way to the right. And select the main, I don't know what it's called on yours, it's either LR or main. Just click the title there and it'll highlight it. Wait a minute, I gotta find X Air Edit. I don't think I've ever been in here. No, 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 that's your software. That's the software. That's the software where you do all the adjustments that we were just in. Okay, I'm there. Okay, click LR. All the, what's the last channel all of the way to the right called for you? Is it called main or LR? 
Uh, main LR, all the way to the far right. Okay, click main LR so that it highlights that channel. Okay, it's lit up blue. Perfect. Now up top, click all the way up top, click EQ. Okay, I'm on EQ. Okay, um, starting from left to right, it says EQ and then it says reset. Is EQ lit up or is it uh, off? Oh, it's lit up and I got 45 my low cut in there. Wait, there's already EQ adjustments here? Yeah, there's, uh, this is what I've been playing with for the adjustments. In the oh, all right, hold on one second. Hold on. Now, instead of clicking LR, go back and click your mic channel which was three. Okay, there's really nothing to click on the mic channel, just mute or no, but I'm over on the three. No, meaning just select your mic channel and then the EQ should have changed to show how that channel is EQ'd. Did it change? Uh... Uh, from the far right, clicked in LR, then I went over to the left to my O3 channel. Uh, that's where you want me to go? Yep, I want you to highlight the O3 channel that I think has your name on it or your call sign. And then I want you to click EQ up top and t tell me if that's a straight line or if that's EQ'd. It's EQ'd as well. All right, so uh, I'm coming... That's odd to me because that, ch this is where you should be doing most of your EQing on the mic channel. And then you do a little bit of touch up EQing on the main LR. They're separate EQs. So you get it to sound the way. So what I was going to have you do was just go into the, um, I thought you were only EQed on the mic channel. I was going to have you go into the main LR and do a boost at 94 hertz. But I don't want to touch that right now because you have two drastic EQs going. Okay, I see now. I thought I was seeing two different ones. Now I totally understand. Right. So what you want to do when you're rebuilding, Dwayne, you want to you want to flatten them both out. Click re. Don't do it now, but click reset. And you, and your old setting is already saved, so you could go back to this. But click reset on both of them. EQ the mic channel only the so it the the interface works like this what that's why I keep telling you to click O3 or click LR main LR whatever you have highlighted is what you're affecting you're affecting that channel so if if you want to highlight channel 3 you want to flatten the EQ you want to get that EQ to make your voice sound almost like the final result that you want and that's what takes time then you click on you're still on that channel then you click comp and you turn the compressor on and you get like three to six db of uh compression just the touch maybe you could go seven or eight but no more than that then you apply your effects one at a time make sure everything is sounding good um Last effect you apply is the dual combinator after you watch that video, which I uh, put in Rumble for you. And then the final step is to do any other EQ tweaking in the main. And you might only have one or two cuts or boosts. So if your main was flat right now, I was going to tell you to do like a 3dB boost at 94 hertz. But it's not flat in the main, so we don't want to mess with that. Okay, but if I go back to uh, the LR, I can uh, reset that EQ because I'm not going to need that and just uh, work off the EQ that's in my uh, 03 channel. Correct. If you reset it now, you're probably going to... Are there like drastic cuts and boosts? Yeah, there is. Yeah, so if you reset it now, you might sound like mud. I don't know. W4DOM, I think we missed 50. W3D. KB2, UKA. 
All right. Well, that gives me a good insight, Doug. I'll play with that. Uh, I'll put the earphones on and I'll play with that and get that uh, get that set. Now that I totally understand that. Yep. And that video that I put in Rumble, that guy, um, Alan Hamilton Audio, he's not a ham radio guy, um, but he has every tutorial on the X Air. So I just sent you the dual combinator one, but I would. I still watch him today, like, because I forget things and I got to go back. I would watch one of, and he's going to call it the X, he uses the XR18, but the only difference is, is he's USBing his audio in, but everything else is identical. So I would watch how to set up a channel strip and all his videos on the X Air. They're phenomenal. All right, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll watch those videos and learn about that. But, you know, I wonder why when I was playing around with this program, I cup, I adjusted the EQ once and then I hit something. I said, I thought I had that adjusted. Now I understand why, because there's two. Yes, but you're also using Don's profile. So maybe he had it adjusted also. And then maybe you went in and tweaked what he had. Um but normally you do just a little bit of touch up in the main. You have to think of it as uh, if you're running like um, sound for like a church or or uh, a music hall, right? You're going to do all your EQs on your mic for your singers, but then the main that the audience is hearing, you might want to touch that up too. It's the same thing with this. Yeah, so the first EQ I'll touch up is uh, on my... Uh my auxiliary or my input number three, that was the main one to touch up first. Yes, correct. And I just gave you on my receive a little boost um, around 63 hertz, and it, it, that's, it gave the fullness back. So once you get, um, I always feel like 94 hertz, Frank taught me this, N2QQF, 94 hertz is like the magic low end frequency. Where you do it, even if you're cutting there, you want 94 to be higher than everything else. It, it tends to work. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to go watch TV with the wife and kids. I'm glad to be back on the air, and uh, I'll speak to all of you uh, bright and early tomorrow. Uh, this is KB2 UKA. Uh, going to be shutting down the stream, but I'll listen out. Go ahead, Dwayne. Okay, right, guys, I'll be back tomorrow. Get out of here for a while. Appreciate you helping me out with that program. And uh, enjoy the TV. Catch you tomorrow. Guys. Sometime. W3D. 73, Doug. Have a good evening. VA3KBC. Catch you later, Doug. KB3WBX. All right, guys. You take care. KB2, UKA going QRT. 73.